Our title for today is The Treatment of the Edentulous Jaw. So, first of all, let's um, look at osteointegration and let's look at what we have available today to us when we look at implants. First of all, when we're looking over the years of osteointegration, we can say that um, the 80s, of course, were our first uh, forming years and, and start of the long-term results, which was very functionally driven. Then in the 90s, we were focusing very much on uh, prosthetic solutions and how can we improve the patient's acceptance as well as uh, satisfaction with uh, the uh, treatment with dental implants. And then now, we're like uh, pretty deep into uh, the 2000s and we're looking really how can we combine everything, which is basically focusing on aesthetics, on function, on health, but also on comfort. And so today, when I go into this presentation of the edentulous jaw, we're going to combine all these factors, basically aesthetics, function, maintaining, of course, health for many years, and then also comfort for the patient. And that brings us then immediately to the first question which I would like to pose when we're looking at treatment of a patient really is, um, are we looking at survival of the dental implant? So like, you know, are we looking at statistics where we're trying just to improve uh, implants and patients' acceptance of implants? Or are we actually looking at the quality of the survival? And obviously, the answer is that um, when I look at my patients and and I'm looking at um, the treatment of my patients with dental implants, I'm always looking and focusing on the quality of the uh, survival of these implants and really what's the quality of life which we're giving to these patients. Uh, I always remember that like this is really giving them a third chance. We're giving them pretty much a third dentition and therefore also you know, turning sometimes a patient who is orally handicapped without having any teeth, now into like, again, like a stable, confident person who has an improvement in life style. So it's definitely a quality uh, versus just a survival. I want to like then also look at like, how do I define the type of my edentulous patient? I mean, that's like, uh, I'm looking at a patient when uh, he or she comes into my office and uh, trying to find out like, you know, what is this patient really looking for? So the first focus will be is have uh, or has my patient really lost only teeth? Or um, is there more which was lost with, uh, the, uh, with these um, uh, missing teeth which are present? Uh, for example, uh, has soft tissues been lost? Was there periodontal disease? Uh, then was bone lost? Was there maybe resorption? Uh, throughout the uh, time that the patient had no teeth. So um, is there now a need for us to reconstruct the bone and the soft tissue either with a regenerative procedure or with a prosthetic uh, type of reconstruction? Uh, the second uh, question I ask is my patient looking for a non-aesthetic reconstruction, so basically functional, he or she just is looking for like an improvement of stability of the prosthesis? Um, or are we really looking at like a very high-end uh, patient who uh, wants to restore everything? So basically wants to restore again having teeth, having a normal smile line, and having uh, the bone and the soft tissues to look for like when they have a high smile line to almost be natural. So that's a second one to define. Um, the third type to really define is now, um, am I looking at a patient who um, is going to be satisfied with a removable uh, treatment solution, so like an uh, overdenture type, which is potentially going to be giving the patient a stable result, but still the patient will have to remove it to clean underneath it. So um, this obviously will be one type of patient satisfaction. Uh, the other option for this uh, question is, of course, does the patient uh, or is the patient looking for a fixed restoration? So something which really now is going to be attached and is going to be more permanent and which can sometimes be more difficult to make and also has its limitations. Third 
or fourth type uh, of patient that I have to look at is how is my patient really um, from a loading standpoint? Uh, does my patient have a history of bruxing? Uh, does my patient have a history of uh, losing the teeth potentially through like a heavy clenching? Are there TMJ uh, problems, pain, discomforts, which I have to address because obviously that could be a problem for the implants. Um, then I come to my fifth question, which um, is a very important one today. It's really like looking at, can I place my implants um, immediately uh, with a functional restoration? So is this an immediate function concept? And I'll go into that a little bit because today obviously we can do uh, the teeth in an hour concept or we can do teeth in a day concept or we can do teeth in a month concept. I mean, all those are possible today and there are options which you can review with your team, with your comprehensive team um, and also including your patient. And then the last, of course, which is important for patients is how is the compliance <coughs> of the patient with um, oral hygiene. I always remember that many of these patients have lost their teeth because of poor oral hygiene. So it's possible, of course, that um, this also might mean that I have to think about this when I treatment plan these patients. So in summary, how much tissue is lost? Is it an aesthetic or non-aesthetic reconstruction? Is it a fixed versus removable? What's the load in this patient? Is it an immediate function concept or a delayed concept? And how is the oral hygiene of the patient? So these are all important ones to look at. So now give me, let me present to you the first um, patient which I would consider to be a patient who definitely fits into the treatment plan of an uh, uh, edentulous maxilla or an almost edentulous maxilla. As you can see here, uh, this particular patient is um, looking at um, treatment planning and being treated as you can see here, with implants. So we're looking at an, a severely atrophied upper jaw. You can see here some uh, vertical losses in the posterior maxilla. You can see a large pneumatization of um, these sinuses on, on both sides, left and right. And you see a uh, few hopeless teeth uh, in the posterior with the molars and a few hopeless anterior teeth.